Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video review. I am the Tech Gooch. Now, this is the Anova Precision Cooker. Now, this is their Wi Fi and Bluetooth edition. Um, and this is awesome. Best way to put it, in my opinion. Uh, this allows you to cook meats to their perfect temperature and consistency every single time without fail. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's very easy to set up. Um, now I'm going to go through a little bit of the setup procedure and a little bit of the use of it, but I'm going to kind of describe at least uh, it, it, at first here. So this essentially is a water bath cooker. It does come with instruction manuals and stuff right out of the gate, which once you understand how everything works, um, but it does give you some standard stuff so tender beef and you can go you can use this but if, there, if you use the app the app is awesome uh, and it tells you very basic stuff and even recipes uh, so this is the cooker and essentially what it is is eh, it's always fun to get it out of the box right it's a smart heating element maybe the best way to put it because what it does is, this is a, the mechanism that you basically slide down here uh, and then you attach it to the side of a pot. Um, I can show you, and to be honest, let me grab the pot real quick and that way it can go over with it on the pot. Okay, so here I have a pot. Now this is actually a canning pot. So this is a, a pot we usually use just to, to, to can vegetables and stuff um, and fruits. I have it sitting on my table, but I did put a cutting board underneath it because when you do cook with this, obviously the water is going to get to the temperature that you're going to cook at. Um, I'd rather just be sitting on a piece of wood that I'm not too worried about damaging or anything. So I have it sitting on top of a cutting board. Uh, I have my pressure cooker or my precision cooker here with the mount on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the mount here, mount it on the side of the pot, quick and easy. Uh, adjust where I want this to sit so I can read it easily and then tighten that up and now it's nice and tight. Now there are minimum and maximum lines on the cooker here. If I actually can show you, I'll loosen it back up to show you real quick. On here, it says down here minimum, up here maximum. My water depth is just over minimum right now so I, I do uh, work with that. Obviously you're not going to want to go to the max line with the water unless you have the food in the water already because as you put food in there it's going to displace the water higher. So. This, the one gripe I will say I have about this, I wish the power cord was a foot longer. A foot longer would be great, but I have an extension cord. do not need a grounded extension cord if you do this. Once I plug it in, I already have it set up with my Wi-Fi, so it's going to tell me the temperature of the water, so right now it's at 103.1. It's not doing anything. Um, I can use this little guy here to set the temperature that I want it to be, so let's say I have 150 degrees. At 150 degrees, that's what I'm going to cook to. I can start what's preheating the water. Um, now here's what I will say. If I hit plus play here, oop, there we go. You can hear the fan kick on. Heating element's gonna kick on and the water is gonna actually start to heat because there's a heating, an electric heating element built into the into this guy and it's gonna throw, there's a fan basically on the bottom of this that's mixing the water up so that it stays at an even temperature. It's kind of like can, uh, convection cooking, right, with air, but with water, which is a lot more uh, a lot better, to be honest. Um, so it's going to heat up. It It is an electric heating element. It's small, obviously. It's not going to heat very fast. So what I usually do is, when I figure out a temperature that I want the water to, I will fill this to a point, and then I'll start, like on the stove top, I'll just get boiling water in a pot and add a, a, a pot of boiling water in here, and it'll bring up the temperature really fast. Or I have actually set this whole pot on the stove. If, if I'm not going to use the stove for any purpose other than, than this, then I'll throw this on the stove. And while this is heating water, I'll actually heat it from the bottom as well. Then when I get within about 10 degrees of the water temperature, I'll turn off the, the stove because then the ambient electric heat from my stove. Now, I do not have gas. I have an electric stove. For gas, you could go all the way to the temperature uh, because you're not going to want to go too far past the temperature. Um, it's going to maintain whatever, if I set it to 150 degrees, once this receipt reaches 150 degrees, I'll get an alert on my phone because it is connected to Wi-Fi and it's connected to my phone and my app. Um, but at the same time, uh, then I can set time. And so when it actually gets to that temperature, that's when you can actually start setting time. Uh, so in order to use this, essentially what you have to have is the cooker, a pot to put 
all your goods in, right, in the water and everything, a pot large enough. It does not have to actually be a, a metal pot. It can be a plastic pot because this only cooks to the temperature you're going to cook to uh, while you're not putting it on a stove top, which would melt it. This is not going to melt it. As long as that plastic can meet or exceed the temperature that you're cooking at, you're fine. I will say this though, cooking in plastic obviously is plastic. There are chemicals in it. Cooking in a, a, a metal or a, a cast iron pot or anything like that is is always better in my opinion. Now this is just an enameled pot, right? So pretty cheap. So these are cheap pots. Works good. Other than that, you'll need the food that you're gonna cook. So in this, you know, if I'm gonna do chicken breast or I'm gonna do turkey breast, steaks, pork chops, uh, you know, anything that you're gonna cook in terms of meat, uh, even fish and stuff, what you do is you put them in a bag. Now, you, you can use a, 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 like a, a vacuum sealer. A lot of people don't have vacuum sealers. So if you don't have one, uh, and this is how I actually do I actually have a vacuum sealer, and I'll still use the Ziploc bags because I can reuse these. Uh, I'll throw the chicken breast down in there, uh, you know, maybe two or maybe even three. You know, you can put multiple bags in here, but you'll put the chicken breast in there. Uh, you'll have to do what it's called a water seal. So you, you put them in there, you try to get as much of the air out as possible. You zip it, you know, three quarters of the way, and then stick it down in a, a pot of water. You're probably going to want cool water because you don't want to burn your hands. Uh, and then leave just the last little bit out of the water so that the water, the pressure of the water pushes all the air out and then zip it seal. Uh, and then once that's ready, then you're going to want to have some, I use clothespins. Uh, and what you do is you lay the bag with the food in the water and then you just clothespin it like this to the edge of the pot. Uh, and so the food would actually be in the water itself. And as long as it's fully submerged and you're, wanting to, you're going to want to double check it because if there's any air in the bag, it will float to the surface. If there's no air in the bag, the, the food will sink. Um, and as, well, as long as that food is down in the water bath at the temperature, then you go by time settings. Uh, within the app or within, there are, you can go to the website and actually get settings uh, for temperatures and stuff like that for depending on what you're cooking. But if I go in my app here real quick, so this is the Anova app. It is connected to Wi-Fi, so when I pull it up in the app here, mine's going to start coming up down here. I can actually pull it up right now. This is connecting to it, so the set temperature is 150 degrees. Uh, I can start cooking right now. Uh, right now it says current temperature 105.6, so it's actually getting up-to-date stuff. If I go to my guide here, these are quick guides. These aren't like uh, recipes or anything, but guide like chicken, uh, let's do chicken breast. Uh, and then you, up here you can choose, let's do, I've done the tender, juicy, and slightly stringy. Uh, I've done the very soft and juicy. I've done the, I've actually done the, ten, the 150 degrees. That's the last time I did it, which was the most tender chicken breast I've ever had in my life. Uh, and so you can kind of choose, oh, let me go back there. 150 degrees for an hour. If I go down 140 degrees for two hours or 160 degrees for an hour for the firm chicken. If I go back. Uh, turkey breast usually takes longer, so if I go to turkey, ten, uh, the last one I did was a uh, uh, white traditional roast, 150 degrees for two hours. But after about an hour, hour and a half in, I actually took it down to 145 degrees for the remaining hour or so. Uh, it was actually probably in there for another hour and a half in total. It was some of the best turkey breast I've ever had in my life. Uh, and same thing with pork. Uh, pork uh, I actually did a pork loin roast. And I did 140 degrees for an hour, um, and then it actually stayed in there for probably a good hour and a half, two hours total, because we weren't right, quite ready to eat yet. Um, the most tender pork loin I've ever had in my entire life was from, uh, from this cooker. So I have personally done pork, I have done chicken, and I have done turkey so far. All three times... I was blown away by its capability and how juicy and awesome the meat was. Uh, this is something that you can make the perfect steak with because if you want medium steaks or medium rare steaks, you cook them in here and get them done and then you take them and finish them on the grill to grill, to just sear the outside of the meat. So the, even the chicken breast and the pork loin I actually seared on my grill. I actually took them out there. The pork loin, I probably did like three minutes on each side, threw it on the plate, and it was good to go. The chicken breast, probably about two minutes on each side just to just to grill the outside of the chicken a little bit, brown it. It was awesome. Uh, the uh, turkey breast I did, uh, we did two turkey breasts. I finished on a pan on the stove with some butter. I just put some butter in a pan, 
uh, seared one side, turned it over, seared the other side, and then I kind of seared the edges a little bit. Just got that firm texture on the outside of the turkey. Quite literally the best turkey, pork, and chicken I have ever eaten. Uh, the pork one I did, I actually had a pre-seasoned one. You can get those seasoned, they're from Hormel or whatever, and they come pre-seasoned or everything. I did one of those. I took it out of its plastic bag and put it in my, my Ziploc bag, just because I didn't know what kind of plastics they used with, with that bag. Um, and I got a mesquite flavor. I didn't like the mesquite flavor with it, but the pork one was amazing. Just the outer seasoning they put on it, I wasn't a fan of. So next time I'm going to do a raw pork one, put my own seasoning on it. So, um pretty awesome product uh if you are one to try to um don't like cooking and taking all the time to cook this is awesome because it's literally put it in the water bath and go a little bit of stuff obviously get the water to the temperature put the food in the ziploc bag otherwise it's finishing it at the end which i actually want to cook home meals now again so makes that more enjoyable so after you're done cooking, clean up on this guy is very simple. I'm still leaking a little bit of water, but uh, after taking this guy off, uh, the bottom I always like to take off as well to dry out because I don't want any of these pieces starting to rust, right? And so I actually put this, I have a drying rack. This is the main part that holds water more than the other guy because this is obviously the heating element right here. Um, so you can see the heating element and there's that little fan. And so I always get tend to get, I have a dog, and dog hairs just seem to float in everything. So I always make sure to double check the end down here and get any hairs or anything out of it. Uh, just stuff from floating in the air gets spun onto this little fan. But other than that, you just let this air dry. And then once it's air dry, then you can actually put it back in its packaging and, and, uh, and store it. Um, it is, like I said, the one downside, in my opinion, is the length of the cord. I'm not the fan of how short this cord is. But aside from that, this is my favorite kitchen gadget I have ever owned. Um, I was looking at a few other ones that I was looking to purchase, and I purchased this one in the end. And I am so glad I did it because it is amazing. Sous vide cooking will it will just change how you interpret how good a cut of meat is. Um, and you can probably make even the poorest cuts of meat taste better because you're you're cooking them at a temperature that's just perfectly cooked and things like for instance when I cooked the turkey breast um, there was a big string of fat right down the middle and that fat turned into like a jello it was like it wasn't hard it wasn't it was just soft as soft could be so it was pretty awesome um, depending on the you know the temperature you cook at and everything will change things but um, I will say that I love this thing and of course I'm probably not going to use it on everything every so often I'll probably want to have a steak that's a little more traditional than sous vide but uh, you can sous vide it and then finish it traditionally and it's going to taste better probably just because of that so i can't wait to do steaks on this guy i haven't done steaks yet but that's coming soon but i wanted to get show you guys this thing uh, if i have any other additions to add to this i will um be sure i'll be sure about that but um throughout the length of the video i probably posted some photos of my various cookings that I've done with it and I have nothing but great things to say about it so definitely check out the Anova sous vide cooker like that like I said they do offer two versions this is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth version uh, they do offer a Bluetooth version as well without the Wi-Fi not as uh, heavy as a heating element as well so this one has the heavier heating element and does Wi-Fi um, I wanted the Wi-Fi I wanted to be able to track my my stuff from wherever I was and so like uh, once I get it set, I get it uh, pre-cooked to the temperature and I put the food in, you're free to go and do whatever you want to do because with the Wi-Fi version, I even went to, you know, I left and went to work and I could actually track it from work and see what was going on there. So pretty awesome. Um, I highly recommend checking it out. And uh, if I ever get a chance to do a tutorial video, it's going to be over on my uh, Geek Smart channel, which I, I definitely will do. It just may take a little bit for me to get to it because I got to get caught up on other things first. But Geek Smart channel will have a tutorial and, and a walkthrough of how, how to actually use this thing from start to finish. So um, pretty awesome product. Highly recommend checking it out. If you do purchase it from the link below, you are uh, supporting my channel. And I thank you very, very much for that. Uh, that said, if you have any other questions or comments for me, let me know. 
Uh, subscribe to the channel above, like the video, check us over on TechGooch at social media, and at thetechgooch.com. So thanks again for watching, guys, and stay tuned for another video, and we will see you next time.